Hi there, Patricia, Cody, and Asu. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, yes, evening, I, teacher. I hear you. Bye. Excellent. Hi there. I'm just looking for the for the picture that I use in the background, but I cannot find it. I don't know where it is. So I'm gonna stick with this one. I like the books in the back. So how are you? How was your weekend? Very long weekend. How was your weekend? Tell me. Was it good, bad? I hear you. Singing. I had a cold. I had a cold every weekend. And, really? Uh, my family too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. My family is all sick too. My mom, my dad, they have the the flu. <clears throat> right. But uh -huh. thanks God, my husband and I haven't gotten sick yet. Yet. Hopefully we don't get sick. Right. Hopefully. But let's see. Asu, how are you? Cody, how are you? Asu, I see you. Are you sleeping? Are you falling asleep? Yes, kind of. You look uh, tired. I, I feel tired. <laughs> you look tired, to be honest, to be honest with yes. you. To be honest. But hopefully we can get <laughs> to, to work. <laughs> right. Hi, Cody. Hi, teacher. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Very good. And you? Are you Actually, okay? Yes, I'm doing better than yesterday. <laughs> better than yesterday. <laughs> Hopefully worse than tomorrow. <laughs> now, well, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to start with section four today, which is what a story, right? And you were supposed to bring a story to, to, to remember a story for one minute. <gasps> Do you remember about that? Kind of? Yeah, teacher. excellent. Let me just go yes, ahead and teacher. remind the others to come to the class. I'm going to text them on WhatsApp. Just give me, let me have access to it. <coughs> My goodness. Okay. So today, our first objective is to tell stories, how to tell stories. Right. To do that, we're going to listen to a story, which is around the campfire, right? And which is actually uh, pretty much how you tell stories in the US. Usually, when you go camping, right, you make a bonfire, right, and you start telling stories. So that's what we're going to do today, right? Just let me put here PA1. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call me a sec. Okay, hi Mayra, hi Veronica. Can you see my computer? Oops, yes? Yes. Okay, very well then. Yes. Okay, so we're going to listen to the story, and after this, we are going to listen to your story. Okay, your story. So let's be ready. Now, tell me if you can listen to this, and after that, I will turn off my microphone. It's loading. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. You listen to that? Yes, yes. teacher. Yes, okay. teacher. Yes, teacher. Perfect. I'm putting myself on mute. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Oh, don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. 
Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So, what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that, just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. And was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor dead bride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay then, I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us. And sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers and they're in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that, thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. You see, the story wasn't spooky at all. It was actually funny, right? <laughs> okay, so you saw, right, what, uh, uh, how can I tell you? Like in this case, right? <laughs> Every time you tell a story, what we have to do is to give intonation. Our pronunciation could be really good when we are saying something, but when we use intonation to tell a story, right, it's gonna give us that spark, right? Or that creepiness when you're telling a story. For example, right, when you're telling a story to, to a kid, right, when they're going to bed, right, you're not going to tell the story, oh, once upon a time there was, a, no, once upon a time there was a princess. So you give a different total voice, 
right? Different intonation. Imagine you're telling your kid, once upon a time, there was a princess. Yes, good. So it doesn't have the same uh, spark in it, right? So let's go ahead and listen to your stories, right? You will have one minute, right? To go ahead and tell us your story. Let's see who wants to start. Did you get your story ready? One minute only. Right here, we should finish before 8.20. Mm -hmm. Who wants to start? Me too. Okay, Patricia, very good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I was doing a cesarean section for a transfer ferus. And when I opened the uterus, the ferus take out his arm, which is a difficult moment to solve and when I was trying, the amniotic fluid came out and left me inside more difficult to manipulate the ferrous. And we ran the risk of injuring the arm's nerves. I was so worried that I thought I was not going to make it. However, I taught me to carefully flex the baby's arm and put it back into the uterus when I made up a war ball wounds in the uterus, forming an ancho, and grabbed his hips and gently uh, bowed him down with me. So I could finally put him out. Mm, my and goodness. that was my, my worst uh, two minutes in my life. <laughs> the worst <laughs> minutes of my the life. The worst two minutes. And that's actually real the life. Worst. So that's totally. Yes, I yes, that's that's real. Okay, <laughs> that was horrible. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Terrible. Yes. Thank you so much, Patricia. Very good story. Thank you. You see, and easy, fluent, and I was I, I was cut by your story. Very good. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. So Patricia, you started, you choose who's gonna be next. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I choose uh, uh, Cody. Cody Monterose. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to the, no. <laughs> uh, I do have a, a, the story, the creepy story, but I, I invent the one. <laughs> But just okay. a simple thing. Just yeah. a simple thing, okay? Remember, okay. intonation <laughs> so you can catch it. Sorry, it really was funny. Okay. <laughs> Once upon a time, <laughs> there was a little girl in her 15. She had uh, long hair and she lived into the wood with her sister. And they had a three <laughs> kitten. One day, one of the kitten get lost or got lost. I don't know how to say. Mm -hmm. and, and they were really sad. And they were looking for the, the kitty in the river, but they found a little bird in the river. They were happy, but the beer, but the beer died at the next day. It's just that, I don't know, <laughs> invent more. <laughs> it's without contest, without trauma, anything. <laughs> without any plot. <laughs> any plot. <laughs> Your story sounded like uh, the like broken telephone. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember when we used to play the broken telephone? Telephone decompuesto? That's, yeah. <laughs> that's how it sounded. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was funny actually. Very good. Just to practice my English, okay? <laughs> to practice your English. Very well. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. Thank you, Corey. Uh, choose another person. Let's see. Uh -huh. Who's next, Cody? Cody? 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me choose. Um, mm -hmm. Adriana. Adriana, Adriana Pais. What's your story like? Tell us. Okay. Um, okay. My grandmother always told a story where did you did you live before? She had many animals like chickens and rabbits in a barnyard. And she said that at night an animal came, came to eat them. My family had never seen what it was. One day, my great-grandmother, great she kid was, and it turned out that it were big dogs. It long, um, long legs. She say were carejos. And to, ch and to chase them uh, away, a neighbor had to her to throw, throw something at the stick. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but she is married that toss up to some sticks and hit them, they did not appear again. Okay. Very good. I like the stories about El Cadejo because they are too, always speaking. Have you ever seen El Cadejo in your life? No. No? <laughs> no. No. No, teacher. I thought I, 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 I think I saw it once, but no, maybe it was, no, it was too late. Maybe it was too tired. There are two kinds two kind of cadejo, the black and the white. The black and the white one. Yes, that's what they say, right? So hopefully one day we will see them. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Adriana, who is next? We have Elizabeth, Mayra, Azu, Luis, Silvia, Veronica, Adrian, and Rosa, and Gracina. Um, Silvia. Silvia. Okay. Okay, once, once upon a time in a Halloween day, there is a young lady that celebrates the day with a lot of anxiety. Her house was a phenomenal decoration, big bones, pumpkins, and many distractions for were scary, that were scary. That she didn't, that she wakes up with the less food. Something was different. The bathroom mirror broke and it's been nothing to her. So she stepped on her cat's tail and it's not, it means nothing for her. She even fell off of the stairs and it means nothing for her. I say that was painful, but she continued exciting for the day. At nine at 12 p.m. With the street full of, with the street full of people, suddenly all the monster and ghosts of the decoration comes to life. That was scary, but she was, was the sweet gummies, the that she gave to the children. They jumped out of the bowl where they were, and they became a giant sweet gum troop that she don't doubt to eat her was awful. Uh, and one more time, she was scary when suddenly she, wake up, she wakes up. It was Halloween day, but she's sleepy eating gummies and there are a lot of top of her. And that's the end. Excellent, Sylvia, very good. Who doesn't love Halloween? Okay. Halloween is a very special date, right? Mostly if you like if you like American culture, you see the Halloween is so important in American culture, right? Because it's, it's like the stars of the holidays, like Halloween, then Thanksgiving, and all of the others, right? Christmas and so on. Very good, Sylvia. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see who's next, Sylvia. Let's give a couple of more minutes. Who else is ready? Uh, you have your microphone off. Uh -huh. Mayra de Pax. Mayra, Mayra, your story. Hello, everybody. Hello. Well, 
Um, sometimes, sometime ago, I want to visit my best friend. Well, we were very good. We were talking and then somebody came to the house. We opened the garage because that man went to save his car. He saved his car and he went out again. We came back to the living room and then the light skirt turned on. And we were very surprised because nobody were in the car. Mm -hmm. We just watched into the window. The car was in front of the car. Sorry. The car was in front of the living room. <laughs> and the car turned on the lights and turned off like uh, four times. Mm -hmm. And that's all. That's all. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Miss Mayra. Very good story. Who is next, Mayra? Um, Mayra? Should I choose? Uh, Ad Adrian? Adrian, Adrian Weiler. It's your turn, Weiler. Hello. Good evening, class mate. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, my short history of horror uh, was a few years ago uh, when I was at a friend's house. Uh, he was on a cow and I heard his noises. I do. Someone was, was cleaning. I did not pay attention uh, to what I hear. Uh, the mysterious thing is that when I asked him who was cleaning, he told me was uh, he was the only on at home. And when when uh, to see where the noise had been heard, when he was when he saw a table had been moving, a uh, very very thin on the floor. No one was there. He was the cat that did it. That that <laughs> gave me a little terror. <laughs> that is a pretty sick story. A sweet little kitten. <laughs> Very yeah. good, Adrian. Very good. Sometimes we have. Have you ever feel like so scared when you're alone at home that you listen to a noise? <gasps> And you think like it's a serial killer in your house, right? Like, oh my God, and maybe it's just the, a tree or just a car outside. <laughs> okay, very good, or a cat. Very good, Adrian. <laughs> Who's next? Let's see. The next uh, mm -hmm. classmate is Azucena. Asu. Hi, Asu. <laughs> Hi, that was so scary for me. <laughs> 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 uh, actually, teacher, I think I don't have a. You don't a have really a story. Spooky story. Mm -hmm. A really yeah. spooky story. No, but uh, I remember when I was a child. Um, I was uh, around eight years. Um, I had a cousin. Uh, a cousin that. Um, always try to, to scare me <laughs> about anything. <laughs> so one day uh, we went to visit our grandmother. Okay. And uh, I remember it was kind of um, four, four, four evening. Mm -hmm. It was but but it was but the sky was so dark as if I uh, will to rain or something like that. <laughs> like and, today. <laughs> uh, uh -huh, like today, the sky looks like like this. And um, my father used to tell us scary stories. While we um, were um, 
playing or something like that. And that day, um, he began to tell a story. Um, I don't know if you know the story. Uh, it's a funny name of the story. I don't know how to say it in English, but it's a... Um, Dame, dame, dame tu nalga y te doy tu guacal. Something no. like that. I don't know no. that. I don't know if, if my father invented the story, but... I would say, no, thank you. Yeah, something like that. But the point is that he intonation very well the, the words. And my cousin and I was very concentrated in the story. <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, at the at the trauma of, of this of the the the, the story, uh, my father threw a uh, aguacal. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and we were so we were so scared. I, I remember that I cannot move my arms and my legs because I was so scared. Uh, I would be scared with the, with that. Like the girls, they, they, were, they were just telling the story in the video when they started yelling, like uh, crying out loud. So I was like, oh my God, those noises, they make me actually... <laughs> Actually, I was thinking that the man that appeared in the video was the murder. <laughs> I, I, I think so too. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, very good, Azucena. So Thank let's you. not have wakales nearby. Okay. No. <laughs> we don't have that, okay? But it yeah. was too, too scared because uh, my, my grandparents uh, live in a state. I don't know how to say finca. Uh huh. In, a, but in, in the countryside. Dark state. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. In the countryside. Uh huh. Like and that's there was so uh, much better. Around trees and cats and dogs. <laughs> it was that. It like was, me. I live in the yeah. countryside. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> uh, I think in this place, I had the best memories of my childhood. <laughs> totally. With my <laughs> okay, very good. That's Susana. Thank you so much. And I okay. think now we just missing Luis, right? Luis, go ahead. Luis and Gracina, right? Let's go ahead, Luis. Where are you? No, I don't see. Oh, yeah, here, there you are. Hi, Luis. Tell us Hi, your good story. Evening, good evening. Well, my story is about my when I was young, you know. I when I finish all, all my classroom, I my mother always let me go with my aunt in Usulután. Oh. Uh, they they are they are my family have a, a big house. Mm -hmm. the rooms are are biggest. Uh, maybe you you can eight or ten bell, bells together, you know, and we don't have light. Just uh, uh, in the night we have candles or uh, how is the name uh, gas lamp, you know. Candiles, yes. Uh huh. A los candiles and. The night start at uh, six o'clock. We try to take uh, our dinner at five thirty because our house always was a dark. You know, you how in the uh, your dining room, you have to cross the living room. You have to cross the the kitchen when do when you want to go to the bedroom to the bathroom and the bathroom is uh, in the backyard 
and our aunts always uh, say about uh, the hombre lobo, the well, how is hombre lobo, werewolf, and cipitillo and uh, la ciguanaba. Yes, to take uh, that we are a stay in calm, you know, and and when the when you never uh, how do you say así es caso? Uh, I can hear you. You had to obey. Okay, I I have to obey. Uh, and we, when we, we don't do that, you know, they, they live it, living in a, a room with our bed alone. <laughs> and you know what, what mean when you are a kid, you know, it's a big room and you ne never see nothing, only it's a, it's a dark. You know, and you hear some noise, and you always uh, scared about all the noise. And you say, "Auntie, Auntie, come here! I need you always. I, I, uh, <laughs> I always, I try to to obey anytime <laughs> you want. You know, uh, that's that's it. <laughs> that's, that's that's a little bit traumatizing, right? Like you have to be in the dark all night." Uh -huh. very, but, very... Uh, yeah but but you when you go to my aunt you you know that you have to to be, be good with her and ne I never say nothing bad with her <laughs> not even what was the word that my mom my, my grandmother doesn't like my granny doesn't like the word cheese she doesn't like it so you have you don't have to say it. <laughs> very good Luis thank you so much it's a good story and are we missing somebody? Gracina? Gracina? Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Do you have your story? No? Yes? Uh, no, but I invent. Oh. <laughs> <Your story. laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Have one minute, uh huh? One minute, okay. Once upon a time in a rainy day, a rainy day, a little child lost in a stranger town. And so at our house, uh, he entered in the house and saw the stranger things, uh, or different stranger things. And um, while uh, he walked, entered, in the house, um, he saw different doors and he opened and opened and opened doors and suddenly uh, uh, in the dark, um, he, he feel uh, a stranger, um, how do you say? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, como vibra? Bite. Ah, okay, bite. Bite. And, and he saw a uh, old man in a, in a room. And and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and now <laughs> my imagination is locked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you for okay. trying, Gracina. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, uh, are we missing somebody? No, right? Are we? No? Okay. Now, what we're going to do right now is that in the next point, we talk about the past continuous and the past simple, okay? Past continuous is also known as past progressive, right? 
Past simple, simple past is the same thing. Now we have two tenses right there. Both are dead in the past, right? We already know this because we're pre-advanced, but I would like you to just remember, right? You're gonna watch the video, that's fine, right? But let's go ahead and go over that. What is the simple past? The simple past will tell us activities that are already finished. Okay, so when you're using the simple past, that activity, it's gone. It happened. It's not gonna, probably it's gonna happen again, but it's not gonna be related to the activity that finished. For example, I would say, I graduated in 2013. I graduated. That action happened in the past and it will stay in the past, right? That's a simple past. However, when we talk about the past simple, the, sorry, the past progressive is another activity that happened in the past that stays in the past, but it happened for a period of time, right? So I would like to do this because I know you're gonna see that in the video and all that, but I would like you to pay attention to me for a moment, right? Past simple. BS past progressive. Remember, past progressive is the same as past continuous. What's the change, Sylvia? What's the difference? None. Right? It's the same thing. Right. The only thing is that I forget how to write past continuous. I don't know why. I know how to say it, but <laughs> I don't remember how to write it. So I'd rather use past progressive. Now, we're going to do this. Simple. We have this, dun, 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 right here. Oops, sorry. We're gonna have this timeline. I love timelines right? because timelines, timelines actually tell you where things happened or not, right? So we're gonna put here, this is the present, right? Present. This is the present. Of course, this is the future, right? And this is going to be our past, right? So we have three tenses, three major tenses right there, right? So with these three major tenses that we have in our today's class, we're going to work with simple past. First, the simple past is gonna be an activity that happened in the past right here, happened in the past. And it will stay in the past. So I will say, I bought a pair of shoes. And I bought a pair of shoes yesterday, right? This is my example, something that will stay there. Right, we say right here in the past, right? Now, we say, I bought a pair of shoes yesterday. The verb bought, past tense of buy, right? But within the past, right? This will be the past, I'm gonna make it bigger, you will see. I'm gonna make it like this, right? All of this is going to be the past. This is the past. Now, for all of this, we have something that happened yesterday, right? But we can also say here, right? Another activity that happened yesterday. I was working very hard last night when my boyfriend called me, right? I have this activity also that happened in the past. But what happens with this activity? This activity happened for a period of time during the past. It didn't stay just in one point, it keep on going. Right? It kept on going, 
How? For the whole night, right? I was working last night. It didn't happen just one minute. It happened for a period of time, right? So right here. And then, boom, my boyfriend called me, right? This action, my boyfriend called me, it happens once. And it stood in the past too, right? Do we understand the difference between the simple past and the past progressive? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay. Yes, teacher. Very well. Now, remember, things that we need to remember because when, when you were telling a story, right? Some of you forgot the past, right? When we're telling the stories, usually the story is said or is told in the past, right? Because something, when we say story, oh, it already happened, right? And since it already happened, it's like saying, or like telling someone an accident, right? You know, last year I was watching Grey's Anatomy, right? I was watching actually a season three of Grey's Anatomy around 10 a.m. in the morning when I heard a big, uh, like a woman was yelling. She said, help in Spanish. So I thought it was actually on the TV, right? So I was like, was that in, 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 oh, what was that in the hospital in Grey's Anatomy? So it's like, mm, let me listen to that again. I went back to do the series, but I did not listen to the noise again. Then my husband came out of, the, of his office running and he said, did you listen to that woman? And I said, oh yes, I think that was an accident. Okay, so there was an accident on the road, right? So when we listened to the accident uh, on the road, we went outside our houses who, because we live in the countryside, right? So there are no many, like there are no many people right here just a few houses. So we went outside, tried to help the, the people in the accident. And they were already on the, on, on, on the road, right? So there were some kids there crying. That they were, there, there was actually a crash, right? So when I'm telling you this story, everything has to be in the past, right? Because it happened, right? There are some things that I would use the past for it. For example, when I say, when I was watching, right? When I was watching Grace Anatomy, I heard a noise. Ah, oh, okay. Right, so an action that was happening was boom, interrupted by something else. And usually the simple past will help me to interrupt that, that uh, uh, action, right? Now, we have this. Now we're gonna watch the video. Right? We already have a background, we watch the video and we see if we have questions, okay? Let's do it. I'm pretty sure we will do it right. Tell me if you can see the, the screen. Yes. Yes. Okay, very well then. I'm gonna put myself on mute so we can watch the video. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn the difference between the past continuous Sorry, be ready to give your examples, okay? Continues and a simple pass. Additionally, you'll learn how to express your ideas using both tenses. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to learn is that we'll use both tenses together in order to express complex sentences. So let me give you a quick example. If you want to explain that you were doing an activity such as eating dinner and you were interrupted, uh, let's say by uh, a friend or someone called you. In order to express this idea, you must use the two tenses together. So, for example, I was eating dinner last night when my girlfriend called. In the past continuous, quick example, if you want to explain that you were doing an activity such as eating dinner and you were interrupted, uh, let's say by uh, a friend or someone called you. In order to express this idea, you must use the two tenses together. So for example, I was eating dinner last night when my girlfriend called me. So let's look at the definition. We use the past progressive with the simple past to describe an action that was interrupted by another action. So if we look at this example here, 
they were enjoying the morning. This is the action that was in progress. And there was an interruption. That interruption was that when the thief stole the briefcase. So now let's look at some other examples. So we got about two or three examples here. And um, again, we are trying to express that whole idea that there was a continuous action happening in the past and there was an interruption that occurred. So the example here is while he was escaping from the bank, the robber got caught in the revolving door. So if we look at the timetable here at the bottom, we can see that the past event was, or the past continuous event was, that he was escaping from the bank. All of a sudden, this action was interrupted by this blue event, which is the robber got caught in the revolving door. Um, and then the next example is quite similar. As Jake was running towards the ball, he tripped and kicked it into the wrong goal. The last one is uh, similar. The secretary was making a speech when a protester threw an egg at her. Um, just a quick reminder here. Um, also something that we should uh, keep in mind is that usually, not all the time, while and as will follow a past continuous statement. So as you can see, while he was escaping from the bank, as Jake was running. So typically, these words will follow a past progressive uh, statement, if you will. So what we're going to try to do next is we're going to look at a small paragraph and we're going to try to make sense of it. I will do this one together with you guys and you'll do the next one. So what we want to do here is number one, we want to identify if the statement will be in the past progressive form or it will be a simple past form. In order to do that, we must follow this um, concept that I mentioned that we will use the past continuous for an action that was in progress and the simple pass for an action that interrupted that particular action. So the two events are related to one another. Um, sometimes the events may be separate from each other and that's when uh, that's the kind of thing that you need to understand. So let's look at the first one. What you're going to do is you're going to use these verbs in parentheses that you see here and you will either turn those into a past progressive form or a simple past form. So while diverse, as I mentioned previously, uh, typically we will use, whenever you see this word, it will typically follow a past progressive form. But let's make sure that it makes sense. While, so while divers were working off the coast of Florida, they, and here we should use this verb, okay, but then we have to change that into a past progressive form. So let's see. So while divers were working off the coast of Florida, they, discover a shipwreck containing gold worth $2 million. So yes, it looks like this first event is related to the second sentence. Therefore, this is the action that was in progress and this next sentence is the interruption of this event. So let's kind of like make it work. So while divers were working, be our first answer there. Off the coast of Florida, they discover a shipwreck containing gold worth $2 million. Okay, so that makes sense for the first one there. Now let's look at the next one. The divers uh, and also the next sentence also appears that there was an action that was in progress and then there was an interruption. Okay, so this one, uh, we're going to use the verbs in parentheses. So, so the divers, and we're going to say where, we're going to take that verb and we need to change that into a progressive form. We're filming a show about the coral reef when they found the gold. We also need to change that verb into a past form. So there we go. Okay, so what I would like for you to do is to identify whether the sentences are related to one another. And if so, identify what was the action that was in progress and what other action interrupted that first action. 
So you're going to do this using the past continuous and the simple pass form. It's the action that was in progress and what other action interrupted that first action? Okay, so did you understand there uh, the difference between the past progressive and how one simple past action interrupts a past progressive action? Yes? No? High enough? Tell me, please. Yes? I think yes. Yes? Okay. Okay. Let's try to give some examples, right? Your sentences. Mm -hmm your example sentences, right? Let's try to do that. Mm, when I want to say, I was thinking about the, what do you, what do you say Paz Mundial? The peace? Uh, world peace. Yes, world, world peace. peace, yes. Okay, I, I, I was thinking about work piece and I saw an, I saw an, or oh, I watched an artist that it was a genocide or massacre or a I genocide, don't know. genocide, okay. A massacre. Genocide in, in, in a country, I don't know how to say, but I think mm -hmm. in this sentence I use that the past continues in the past, in the simple past. Okay, okay. What about the others? Sylvia. Yes? That happened to me, teacher. What happened to you? I was screaming because I watched a cockroach in the patio. <laughs> my neighbor wrote me a text asking me what happened. And my neighbor, and my neighbor never uh, talked to me <laughs> until this day. Oh. That day. Now you have a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> now you have a new friend. Okay, very good. Right, okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna show you here one exercise. Okay, here we are. All right, I'm gonna show you here. Okay. We're gonna see some sentences, okay? And I'm gonna put them here in, in the screen, in the white screen. Just give me a moment here. Dun, dun, dun. Look at the screen right here. Can you see the white screen? Yes. Okay. So this is my context, okay? This is my context right now. Cody, can you read the context? <laughs> um, some, so many, please. Yes. Okay. I, I can see. Okay, can you can you read the context? Okay, sorry. Justin is telling a friend how to meet his wife, how he met his wife. Look carefully at the text. Complete the sentence with the simple past or past progressive. Okay, very good. So we have here some sentences right there, right? Look at the first one. Patricia, can you read number one? Okay, number one. Um, uh, I was live. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Can this I is, read with? This is the, uh -huh. the, the problem and this is the answer. 
Okay. I was thinking in Paris for my first. I was year. living there. I live in Paris uh, when I first met her. I was living in Paris when I first met, met her. When I first met her. I was okay. living in Paris when I first met her. Met her. Met her. Met her. Mm -hmm. Very good. So if we see here, right, this number one became an answer, right? I was living in Paris right, when I first met her. So what we're gonna <laughs> do right now is to try, I know we have only four minutes, so I want you to just take a look at it. I'm gonna send you this, this exercise to the chat, don't worry, right? But I want you to look at the sentences. The sentences, right, you need to pay attention to how they work, okay? We have number two, it says, she worked at the Louvre and she uh, a flat by the river, right? So how we, how will we put there? Well, we have half of the answer. I said for me, let me tell her it was, it's a PMB. <laughs> number three. She was working at the Louvre and she um, had, and and she, she had a flat, a flat, by, a flat the river. by the river. Very good. Remember, in in uh, in British English, and this this is France, this is Paris, this is British English, right? And a flat is an apartment. A flat is an apartment. Oh, yeah. yeah. So she was working at the Louvre, and she had a flat by the river, right? So what I want <laughs> you to do is to think about the possible <laughs> answers that we can give using either the simple past or the past progressive, right? That's what we're doing. Looking for the best option, right? We're not gonna use both at the same time, but we're not going to use them because it would be different that I say, I left in Paris when I first met her. No, I was living because I was uh, performing that action. I'm sorry. Me pasa la aire que Virtually. Yes, Cody? The three one is we met at a cafe where we 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 were sitting. We met at, at a cafe. Where we, we were, were meeting. We, we were, were at we a were. cafe. Mm, no, we met. We met at a cafe. Where you we know were the, the same structure. Mm. I think I got it at this point, <laughs> that, right? Yes, the answer for number three is what Cody said, right? We met at a cafe okay. where we were sitting at separate tables. Where we were sitting at separate tables, yes. We were sitting at separate tables, okay? So it that's what you're going to do? I need you to please copy them. And if you cannot copy, I think I'm gonna send them right now to the, to the, to the, to the chat right here. Of course, the, the chat in WhatsApp. All right, just give me a sec. Dun, dun, dun. It's Zoom, okay, here is Zoom. There you are. Please let me know right, when you see it. Yes. Okay, very well then. Okay. Now, I want you to think about questions. I want you to do the knowledge check in uh, in the platform because this week we have to finish uh, section four and five, right? So I need you to do as much as you can and ask me questions, right? Because we only have four days, four hours, which is not enough. Right. Any questions so far, guys, before you go? Does anybody have a question? No? Okay, so I'll be ready tomorrow for any questions that you may have. Our first activity will be to solve this exercise. That will be our first activity by tomorrow. So please be ready, right, and be on time, right? Okay. So I will see you guys. Have a beautiful okay, night. Okay, bye-bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow.